Oh, uh, welcome back, you beauty. Thank you so much for being here. Time to get all excited, even more excited than we always are. The Springboks in blue and white. Hang on a minute. South Africa's World Cup rugby match against the island in Paris on Saturday night. Kickoff at 9 p.m. SA time. It's going to be a big oh, one. Yeah. It's pretty much as big as they come. The uh, incumbent, um, you know, I think the best team in the world and of course yeah. the reigning champions. What more could you ask for? Now the Irish have been down on their luck in the World Cup matches in the past, but this time round, Ah, things are looking a wee bit different. <laughs> uh, the lads in emerald green jerseys have won 11 internationals on the trot and are now rated, obviously, as the number one team in the world, as I said, having of late notched up some fantastic wins against top teams, including, of course, the All Blacks, a series yeah. win in the land of the long silver cloud. That isn't easily done, oh. my friend. Um, then, of course, the French and, of course, the box. It's a huge <laughs> list, They eh? seem to have our number, man. It's a huge list. Uh, to put it mildly, but uh, they, they are amazing. Yeah, I used to literally are. And they're going to be facing the box in the white jersey and not in the awesome familiar green and gold. Now, the Irish have the privilege of wearing their emerald greens as they are the present number one team in the world. So that's why they get dibs on the color of choice. But at least they gave us a reason, dude. Yeah, at least they gave us a reason, man. Reason, and look, yeah. I know some of the old school guys are so stuck to the green and gold, but if you actually look around and you ask anybody, it doesn't actually matter at the end of the day. As long as that Springbok it's emblem and away, the and it's, yeah, man. And yeah. you we get as excited about the away kit as we do about the We moment. do, we do. Um, I don't mind that at all. And there have been some considerable and very serious uh, discussions about this matter. And the South African director of rugby, Rati Erasmus, says that the older generation yearns for the green and yeah. gold in the standard view, but the younger crowd probably don't really care as much as long as the box come up trumps. They want to yeah. see the players, they want to see them play well. Yeah, now Rassi pointed out that the Bok emblem is on the jersey and that's all that counts. So clearly this yep. is what only matters. The boys are backing it, the boys are behind it and the boys are bringing the gears and we are backing them nonetheless. So this is what is, is the most important thing about this. But the news carries on, right? From the Ruggers, we move over to something that I've been dying to find out about. All this NASA news, UFO, extraterrestrials, <laughs> man, it's going crazy. <laughs> Let me tell you about this and especially this one story where I heard there was like this crazy crazy little uh, mummified skeleton that they, that they actually found, and they were going to do an autopsy on that. I've been waiting for the latest, but oh, so much conspiracy, bruh. Uh, well, I mean, they, they led well. Okay, so NASA's independent study, their team have released its highly anticipated report on UFOs a few days ago and basically found no evidence that reported observations of extra, uh, actual extraterrestrials, yeah. despite the amount of conspiracy theory information and material going around. Uh, so UFOs are now characterized by the U.S. government as UAPs, or Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena. Okay, so it's not so much like it's a, a flying thing that we don't know. Now it's just something that we don't know. Yeah. Just yeah. make it better. Uh, yeah, but of course, um, there have been the releases of these mummies found in Mexico. And oh, the same week NASA's report came out, Mexican lawmakers were shown by a journalist, Jamie Musan, two tiny, uh, supposedly 1,000-year-old bodies that he claimed were the remains of non-human beings. Now, scientists have called this claim fraudulent and say that the mummies may have been looted from grave sites in Peru and assembled from human and animal bones. Yeah, now this is the latest that I heard, but... Check this out, bro. This has just come Break in. Now, down, the reports are now saying that Mexican doctors have actually carried out a series of lab studies and found that two alleged non-human alien corpses each belonged to a single skeleton and were not assembled. Ah, the plot thickens. Yeah, what, is so what does this mean? So it's definitely not something that's been created by humans, potentially. This is something we actually have no idea about, bro. This is real. <laughs> crazy. I have marsupials. <laughs> marsupials taking over the earth. So spearheaded by a journalist and UFA researcher who's now become world famous, Jamie Musandi. Mummified specimens were displayed in glass cases as part of a, an official unveiling at Mexico's Congress, as I said last week, in a hearing that stirred obviously a massive amount of excitement amongst UFO enthusiasts. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever get the full That's story. what I'm thinking, man. It's just going to be all these plausibilities, all these potentials, but oh. hook bait, unfortunately, is going to take it <laughs> in a completely different, because everyone now is going to be driven by the sensationalized elements of the story. So I would say maybe believe the fourth story that you read in this case, um, but do some diving. Let us know. If you know more about this than we do, please let us know. I want a scientist to come on the show and tell us all about it. But right now, oh, let's fill our bellies with some of the coolest food you are ever going to find on the planet. This is our heritage. Oh, the culinary hotline. <laughs>